Hi, I'm Dr. Ranjit Ravella, Internal Medicine Consultant Physician, Kim's Hospital, Kamam. I'm also a designated partner at Medrewind LLP. Today, we are going to discuss a new product which is very much useful for the medical students. This is called as the ECG ruler. This is very much useful for the medical students who are practicing day to day and seeing ECGs on a regular basis. This is very helpful to make an accurate diagnosis regarding the ECGs, at least to get a basic idea of what is going on in ECG. Step one, we are discussing regarding the heart rate. For checking this heart rate, first you need to see that your ECG is running at 25 millimeter per second. So first thing is assessing the heart rate. You match your QRS complex, specifically R wave with the start point and see whether the next R wave is and based on that you can tell the heart rate. Step 2, we are assessing the rhythm, whether the rhythm is regular or irregular. Coming to the third step, we are checking the PR interval. So normally the PR interval is between 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 seconds or 120 to 200 milliseconds. By this we can understand whether there is heart block or any other pathology involved. Coming to the step 4, it is regarding the axis. We need to determine the axis by using lead 1, 2 and 3 and if it is normal all the leads are positive and we can also see whether the left axis deviation is there or the right axis deviation is there. Step 5 is evaluating QRS complex. The normal duration of QRS complex is 80 to 120 milliseconds. That is 0 0.08 to 0 0.12 seconds. By assessing the duration of QRS complex, we can understand whether the QRS complex is narrow or wide. By this, we can classify if there is tachycardia or bradycardia into narrow complex tachycardia or wide complex tachycardia or a broad complex tachycardia. Step 6 is QTC interval calculation. This step is very important and there are different formulas to calculate this such as Bezet's formula or Hodge's formula. So we are using Hodge's formula for easiness of the calculation. Why are the Hodge's formula? Hodge's formula is QT plus 1.75 into heart rate minus 60. If it is prolonged, it is more than 440 milliseconds in males and more than 460 milliseconds in females. By this, you can calculate QTC interval using Hodge's formula. The last step is step 7. In step 7, we will be discussing the causes for T wave inversions. It might be normal in some people, but these are some of the important causes which we need to assess. First one is myocardial ischemia or infarction. Second is bundle branch block. Third is ventricular hypertrophy strain pattern. Fourth is pulmonary embolism. And it can also be seen in some thyroid disorders too. So this is the whole part of the ECG. This part of the ECG is an, this is an isoelectric line, you match with the isoelectric line so that you can calculate whether the ST elevation is more than 5 mm or 10 mm and in the vice versa, if there is ST depression, it is less than 5 mm or more than uh, 10 mm depression. This part is the colorful part which will tell us which leads are involved and based on that we can uh, see which wall uh, of myocardial infarction it is. So coming to one lead 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, AVF and uh, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. If there is involvement of uh, inferior leads, there is 2, 3 AVF involvement. If there is involvement of lateral wall, there is 1 AVL and uh, V5, V6 involvement and the septal wall it is V1, V2 and anterior wall it is V3, V4. So this is how we can simplify the ECG and we can easily measure what is going on in the ECG. So let us discuss the ECG ruler on an ECG. So first thing is to match R wave with the start complex. So first you match it with the R wave and see where the second R wave is coming. It is something close to 50. So by this we can understand the heart rate is between 50 to 55. So it is around 53. Second point is to step 2 is to assess whether it is regular or not. So again you match it, you see that it is in the same place or not. So almost the rhythm is regular. It is, is the same thing. So coming to the third step, third step we need to see only that whether the PR interval is normal or not. It is 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 second. Coming to the fourth step is your axis. Axis for the axis you need to check lead 1, 2, 3 whether the wave is positive, QRS complex is positive or not. So this is normal. And uh, coming to the fifth step, it is QRS interval. Normal is 0 0.08 to 0 0.12 second. Coming to the QTC interval, again we have mentioned the formula of Hodges, right? You can calculate according to that. 
coming to the seventh one it is t wave inversion causes coming to the center part of the scale you match it with the isoelectric line and see the elevation how much is the elevation whether the elevation is significant or not you see that the elevation is less than 5 mm or if there is any significant elevation you need to check that coming to the most important part this colorful part that is showing whether the involvement of 2 3 av of in inferior wall is involved or which wall is involved so this ecg ruler will be useful for the mbbs students or uh, uh, physicians who are uh, in peripheries for quickly assessing the ecgs so this is all about the ecg ruler to be discussing today